this is going to be similar to video number 12, where I talked about your homework assignment. This time I have the code, you can download everything. The difference is that we've talked about more concepts and tools like pointers, inheritance, object lifecycle, and so on. So you should be able to write a little better code, but also keep in mind that because I tried to stick to only the stuff that I talked about, later in the series, you should be able to write a lot better code than this. We still have a lot more concepts, a lot more C++ concepts to talk about. And once you start using more tools, you should be able to write cleaner, more manageable code. So this is just a crude example, but I wanted to show you uh, an example of what you can do by trying to be creative and trying to use everything that you've learned so far. So let me just show you what I have. I'm gonna run this F5. So it's a grid and you don't have to do what I did. You don't even have to use a grid. You can pick your favorite game and pick uh, pick your favorite game and create a text representation of it or a text representation of a part of a game. Anyways, P stands for player, I stands for item, E stands for enemy. If I enter E as in east, player goes east, W as in west. So this is similar to video number 12, except I didn't complete this. This is just a single mechanic of my text game. As you can see, if I go to the item, I get the sword. I'm gonna go south as an S, E as an east, and there's the enemy. And if I press Q, I go out of the loop. Try creating your own version of whatever your favorite game mechanic is. And let me also point to another tool that you can use. It's, an, it's quite an important concept. This is called UML. UML stands for Unified Modeling Language. And it's a way for you to visualize your game. And this is a class diagram. So this is the overall a top-down view of all your classes. First watch this video, all the links are below. And you don't have to follow UML down to a T. Some companies do, some companies don't. Uh, if you ask me, it's just a rough sketch of what your game is about or how it's structured. As long as you're able to somehow visualize it, and all you need is pen and paper. Once you're able to visualize your own game, you can move objects around, uh, change the structure, add different layers, add updates or whatever. I'm not a huge fan of using apps for this because apps tend to get very complicated on their own and, and they're very clunky. So some scribbles and whatever pictures that you can think of will do. As long as it's clear enough for you to understand or whoever's in your team to understand, I think it's good enough. The point is being able to visualize it, whether it's in your head or on paper, being able to represent uh, your structure in diagrams, use it to understand your own code better, understand other people's code, communicate your ideas, make things manageable, and make cha changes along the way. So assuming that you've watched the video, here's my diagram. We start with the game processor. The only job of main is to create the game processor and run it. And we're gonna talk more about main later. For this video, let's just start with the game processor. So if I go in there, F12. As you can see, the game processor has scene, render, and character controller. On the diagram, this colored diamond represents composition and the definition of composition has some depth but for this video let's just understand that they're members for example the game processor has the scene it has the render it has the character controller and this game processor object is also responsible for uh, managing the life cycle of these three components make sure that you've watched video number 15 the object life cycle that's a very important concept in OOP and composition can have more composition. The scene has the grid as well as the OBJ creator. If I go into the scene script, here's the grid and the OBJ creator. And it's the same concept. The scene is responsible for constructing and destructing the grid and the OBJ creator. And if you apply that to every object in the game, once the game processor ends, everything gets cleaned up nicely. Once you understand things like composition, if you're able to visualize it, if you also understand the object lifecycle, you're able to compartmentalize certain ideas, process, whatever you define, and you're able to treat these objects as if, almost as if they're physical objects. Anyways, this OBJ creator has an STD vector that contains 
all of the grid objects. And this could have been value rather than a pointer. I just wanted to use dynamic memory allocation because I talked about it. And if we look at the OBJ creator, we're using the new syntax. We're creating objects dynamically, but also at the end of the life cycle, here we clean up everything. If I look at the function, delete all, F12 here, we delete every object that was created dynamically. So understanding the object lifecycle and building your structure with the concept is really important. If I look at the OBJ creator again, in UML, this means inheritance. The enemy is a grid object. The item is a grid object. Player is a grid object. They all share similar characteristics. I'm not going to go through every little line. Once you understand the overall picture, you should be able to understand the code. If I look at the game processor, the entire process is that we create a bunch of objects, we put them in a certain position, and then we enter the game loop. That's it. The render, as well as the character controller, uses the address to the scene. And I could have added more layers to separate them, but again, this is just a crude example. You can write a lot better code. Uh, how you write your code is up to you. You can certainly come up with a lot better structure than this. There's also many concepts that I didn't talk about yet in this series, but the main takeaway here is that you have to be able to write, express your ideas in code, as well as be able to visualize it. I see many people starting out, starting out with a commercial game engine like Unity, and they're going headfirst into physics, things like 3D rendering, without understanding the fundamental concepts. They're just going to get completely lost. Anyways, for your homework, pick your favorite game, come up with your own version of a game mechanic or an entire game even, a text representation of it. Once you're able to build your own structure, you can add changes, move things around, and do cool stuff with it. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, you can reach me on my Discord server. I have all the links below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.